So we are waiting for the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. And I got to tell you, all the ducks are lining up. And we're going to talk about that. We'll also get to some news headlines, some comments of the day. And we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River Channel. And as I do every single day, I remind you, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor. And I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord. And I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable. Grab yourself something to eat and drink. Maybe you want coffee or tea. Ooh, have some ginger ale and some pecan pie. Or grab whatever it is that you like to eat and drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Okay, let's get busy. First, we have to read. I'm really into the Psalms lately, as you know. We, I want to read Psalm 27 before we begin, okay? Here we go. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me. O oh, God of my salvation, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. How beautiful is that? Oh my goodness, is that give me strength and encouragement in these days. Doesn't it? Incredible, incredible. So I, I happen to believe, and I think most of you, this is a little secret. I think most of you that watch me every day will say, we know this, Tom. <laughs> I happen to believe we're, we're very close to the rapture, like on the cusp of the rapture. And, you know, why, why do you think that, Tom? Why do you think that? And, and I'm, I, look at this time period we're in right now. I, I, I always say this. I think older believers who have been waiting a long time are more onto how close we are to the end than believers who, and I'm not, I'm really broad brushing. I'm not saying everyone, but I, th I think generally speaking, the people who have been waiting a longer time are really understanding, whoa, we talked about this for years and it's all, everything is there. All the ducks are lining up. All the ducks are lining up. There's so much tension in this world. Is there not? I just saw an article that said that 40% of U.S. adults believe we're living in the end times. And I'm not talking about Bible prophecy right now. I'm talking about 40% of U.S. adults think we're near the end of the world. They don't understand Bible prophecy. They don't understand their need for Jesus. But they're looking around and they're saying, like, this world's about to end. Like, this crazy thing's going on. We're seeing war in Israel. We're seeing tensions and sporadic bombing in Damascus over and over and over. And you have to remember Isaiah 17, verse 1. The burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city. It's 
It's never happened yet. And it will be a ruinous heap. That sounds nuclear to me. As we watch Israel over 20 times this year, bombing the airport, bombing suburbs of Damascus, there, there's a lot of tension there. We're seeing now, yeah, that could happen at any point, at any time. They're also, they're, they're ready to build the third temple. We've been watching the Temple Institute for at least 20 years, talking about the third temple, preparing for it. They want their temple. They want their temple built now. Will this war lead to the temple being built? I believe it will. In Matthew 24, verses 15 and 16, Jesus says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by, the Dan by Daniel, the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. You see, in Daniel 9, 27, which I'm going to read, it says, then he, we're talking about the AC, the Antichrist, then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. That means seven years. Each day of that week represents a year. Um, so he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. So the Antichrist is going to enter the temple. And that's what tells us there has to be a temple built. There's no temple where they're sacrificing now. They're going to build a temple. There's going to be a seven-year agreement. And halfway through, he's going to walk in and stop the sacrificing. The red heifers are ready. For all intents and purposes, they're, they're ready. They, they've waited 2,000 years to get perfect red heifers. And they have them. They have at least four. Never happened before. We're seeing lawlessness around the world. Have you ever seen lawlessness? Like we're seeing riots, protests. People, I mean, in this country, in the cities, they just break the windows of a store and 100 people enter and they just empty out the store. And you can follow the story and they'll make two arrests. Maybe, maybe lawlessness like we've never riots and hatred hatred the love of many growing cold we're seeing collective weather events around the world i don't know if you follow the channels on youtube where they show you what's going on the past two days every two or three days they make a video and i've been watching these channels for three years and i i just i've never seen weather like this ever is this all just coincidence that this is all happening right now? Earthquakes off the charts, off the charts. And whether you want to say that this war in Israel is the beginning of the Psalm 83 war, many people say that. Many people say it's the beginning of the Ezekiel 38 war. It, it really doesn't matter. The, what matters is like everything is setting up for both of those wars. Whether you believe one is a war and one is not, or one comes later, like we're seeing the setup right before our eyes. Wars and rumors of wars. Economies on the brink of collapse. You can read about it every day all over the world as they talk about a digital system and over well over a hundred company countries have tested out this digital currency and I believe they could flick a switch and just turn it on. I think we're there. They're talking about a cashless one world money system. And how about like are we hearing cries for peace and security every single day you can find stories about people either aimed at israel mostly aimed at israel stop the fighting peace and security peace and security they're talking about it at cop 28 right now the global climate meeting they got going peace and security peace and security they're meeting right now in the United Arab Emirates, COP28. And it's their new, it's the new religion of climate change. How about AI? AI is getting more and more
powerful, and perhaps many are saying that AI could be the image of the beast. I know it's, I know, I believe firmly it's a big part of the beast system. I can't see this lasting for three more years, four more years. And it's only because every single thing, everything that we know kind of has to be in place for the rapture. It's all, it's all in place. It's all right there. Everything is happening. How much longer can it be before Jesus says, or the father says, son, go get your bride. And Jesus comes and raptures us to the clouds, takes us off to heaven. I think we're so close. I think we're so close. In Luke chapter 21, Jesus is talking about all the end time stuff. All the end time stuff. I believe from the rapture to the second coming. And he says in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your, redemption, your redemption draws nigh or draws near. When they begin to happen. Everything we were told to look for has begun to happen or has been happening. I just can't see it any other way but a very soon rapture. Some people say it, it has to happen during the Feast of Trumpets. I used to be one of those people. It has to happen in the fall. But living through these end times now, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to box God. I'm not going to box him. His appearing is imminent. And I'm looking at all the signs going, I, I'm sorry, I can't stop looking up every day. I think we're in a permanent high watch period until the day of the rapture. And, and my thinking really revved up on October 7th when I saw that starting. I was like, uh-oh, here we go. All right, let's get to what's going on in the world, okay? Uh, this is from the Times of Israel. Two Hezbollah-linked fighters said killed in Syria strikes, which were blamed on Israel. A war monitor claims that airstrikes attributed to Israel in Syria overnight last night, killed two fighters affiliated with Hezbollah and wounded seven others. Two Syrian fighters working for Hezbollah were killed and seven others fighting, working for the group, were wounded in Israel airstrikes last night. These strikes on, on Syria just keep going and going. Uh, late night Israeli airstrike reportedly targets pro-Iran militia sites in Syria, south of Damascus. The IDF attacks Hezbollah terror squad. Army tells Israelis near Lebanon border to minimize movements as tensions rise. Next from Insider Paper, Israel's army says more than 400 targets have been attacked in Gaza in the last 24 hours since the truce ended. More than 400 targets attacked. The Israeli military said Saturday it had attacked more than 400 terror targets in the Gaza Strip since a pause in the fighting with Hamas ended the day before. Air, naval, and ground forces were involved, adding that fighter jets hit more than 50 targets in an extensive attack in the Han Yunus area in the south of the territory. Incredible. They're reporting that it's preparation for expanding the IDF's ground operation into southern Gaza. This is from Israel Today. Israel has been conducted, conducting heavy targeted strikes against many targets in the southern Gaza town of Han Yunus. These strikes have focused on the Hamid Project, an upscale residential area where many senior Hamas terrorists reside and operate from. I literally saw a video yesterday where they shot a rocket just into the third floor of this high rise because they thought, one of the leaders, I don't, oh, they knew one of the leaders lived there. I don't know if they got him or not, but you literally saw like this building where the third floor, like a quarter of it was gone. Incredible. Uh, this is from Israel today. Israel has recalled its negotiators from Qatar, noting that Hamas failed to negotiate in good faith and fulfill its obligations. The current impasse cannot be overcome through further talks. They literally pulled their negotiators out of Qatar. And from what I heard, Hamas kind of was shocked. 
Uh, early evening last night, there was a constant rocket fire in southern Israel. A lot of rockets were uh, fired at Israel yesterday. Uh, Amir Sarfati had said that the Palestinian Islamic Jihad took res re took responsibility over a rocket fired toward Jerusalem. It landed south of the city of Bethlehem in an area mostly populated by Palestinians. So it landed on their own people. But don't worry, because no matter what happens, you know, they will blame Israel for that. And the media will jump along. Oh, yeah, it was Israel. Unless they're forced with evidence to say whoopsie, because they've been doing a lot of whoopsies since October 7th. Uh, Hezbollah is, is vigilant. They're ready for an Israeli war. It says Lebanon's Hezbollah said it was vigilant and ready as a resumption of fighting between its Palestinian ally Hamas and Israel-fueled concern that clashes ac across the Lebanese-Israeli border could also restart. I don't know where this is going. I think this leads to the rapture. I don't know if they're going to have another ceasefire or if it's going to escalate. But I really do believe it leads to the rapture. Oh, listen to this. This is from Yonhap News Agency. North Korea bristles at the United States over comments about possibly disabling their spy satellite. South Korean news agency Yonhap News published a point of view about the latest statement from North Korea considering any attack on its space program as a declaration of war. North Korea lashed out at the United States on Saturday after a U.S. space official hinted at, the poss at possibly disabling the North's military spy satellite launched last week, saying that it will take it as a declaration of war against the regime. You don't break Kim's toys. <laughs> that boy will get angry. That boy likes his toys. Don't mess with his little satellites. Okay? <laughs> That's just humor. Uh, from Insider Paper, the U.S. leads call to triple nuclear power at COP28 in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. More than 20 nations, including the United States, called for a tripling of nuclear energy to drive down emissions on Saturday as world leaders assembled for a second day at the United Nations Climate Talks in Dubai. Uh, from The Guardian, from COP28, King Charles warns of vast, frightening experience on the natural world. Listen to this one. The world has embarked on a vast, frightening experiment on the natural world, King Charles has told the world leaders, which risks triggering feedback loops in the climate system that will cause irreversible disaster. Noting that 2023 was the hottest year on record, the king told the COP28 United Nations Climate Summit on Friday, quote, records are now being broken so often that we are perhaps becoming immune to what they are really telling us. We need to pause to process what is actually means. We are talking, we are taking the natural world outside balanced norms and limits and into dangerous uncharted territory. In an opening speech calling on leaders to make COP28 a critical turning point, he warned, we are carrying out a vast, frightening experience, experiment of changing every ecological condition all at once at a pace that far outstrips nature's ability to cope as they're all building nuclear bombs to, and threatening each other with it, just to throw that in there. Our choice is now a starker and darker one. How dangerous are we actually prepared to make our world? See, they're more worried about the weather, about climate change, than they are nukes. More than 130 heads of state and government have gathered in Dubai for the opening days of a two-week summit at which nations are aiming to chart a path for the world to avoid breaching the global heating limit of 2.7 Fahrenheit above pre-industrialized temperatures. Whew. Antonio Antonio. Guterres, the Secretary General of the UN, he said the world was miles from fulfilling the Paris Agreement and only minutes to midnight when it came to the 1.5 Celsius, 2.7 degree Fahrenheit 
goal. He insisted that leaders could still make a difference if they exercised political will. <laughs> they all flew private jets to this, by the way. You know, they 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 did about a hundred years worth of damage to the environment with their private jets. They don't like to talk about that. They don't answer questions about that. It is not too late, Guterres said. You can prevent planetary crash and burn. <laughs> we have the technologies. We can rebuild. I'm sounding like the six million dollar man now. <laughs> to avoid the worst of climate chaos if we act now. And by the way, Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran possibly are all threatening nuclear war. But let's not talk about that. We got to talk about cows. <laughs> That's clown world. <laughs> C-L-O-W-Triple-W-O-N. Clown world. All right. This is uh, from Italy. Strong activity of the Strombolian volcano from the southeast crater of Mount Etna. It happened yesterday, and I saw some video of it. It was pretty crazy. Big volcano. Big volcano. In the last 24 hours, there have been 45 earthquakes over 4.0 in the world, and 12, no, 13. One happened right before I hit record. 13 over 5.0. It was busy earthquake day. Next, we've got the Internet of Trust. Inside the United Nations plan to control speech online. A powerful United Nations agency has unveiled a plan to regulate social media and online communication while cracking down on what it describes as false information and conspiracy theories, sparking alarm among free speech advocates and top U.S. lawmakers. Any surpri anyone surprised? Anyone? Nobody? Nobody? From USA Today, this is most certainly, most definitely clown world. Stuck on holiday gifts? What happened when I used AI to help with Christmas shopping? <laughs> In the past, I've relied on lists or links from the person or a loved one who was offering some suggestions. So when my editor asked me to do a story about using AI to help with my holiday shopping, I was intrigued and a little nervous. Would artificial intelligence be better than me with gift ideas? The timing was also appropriate as shortly after I got my assignment, Google announced it was beefing up its AI offering of its search generative experience to help shoppers find gifts during the holiday season. Wow, it's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> artificial shopping, artificial gifts, artificial sentiment. <laughs> oh man, pretty soon they're going to be telling us we need to buy gifts for our artificial intelligent friends. <laughs> that is clown world. It really is. All right. How about we get some comments of the day before I run out of time? Here we go. Sea Blessed. I love this comment. I read a lot of Sea Blessed comments because they're amazing. If you are a Christian, you are not a citizen of this world trying to get to heaven. You are a citizen of heaven making your way through this world. Love it. I love it. Thank you for that. Jane. Psalm 62, verse 7, In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Jesus, the King of Kings, is coming very soon. I'm praying for Israel, Maui, the USA, Russia, Ukraine, and all nations. Much love, brothers and sisters. Uh, prayers and blessings to you all. Thank you for that, Jane. Beautiful. John, uh, he's talking about... I talked about yesterday my mistake I made and I apologize if you want to see it go watch yesterday's video but he's this made me laugh because John said don't worry about your Bethlehem oops you are a man men make mistakes <laughs> it's what we do <laughs> keep up the good work brother I love that yeah we're all we're all good at making mistakes I'm real good at making mistakes <laughs> Greg Tommy how about a big hunk of red velvet cake and a glass of Christian Brothers eggnog? Why are you doing this to me? You're making me very hungry. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Everyone suggests things for me to eat, or they'll tell me what they're eating while they watch the videos. It's fun. It's all in fun. It's okay to have fun as we await the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's okay to have a sense of humor. It's okay to smile. 
God puts your sense of humor if you have one. And I think most of you do. But God puts your home. He, he's the one who puts your sense of humor right inside of you. <laughs> and he's been laughing at me ever since. <laughs> Heather, heads up, eyes on Jesus. Our precious Lord and Savior is and always will be in control. And in him, there is no fear. He's got this. Praying for Israel, everyone involved, even the terrorists. They all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. Maranatha, thank you for that, Heather. Yeah, we all do need Jesus. We all do need Jesus. We're living, we're living in the very last days. We're living in the very last days. And if you don't understand what Jesus did for you, maybe you were forwarded this video and and you, you've watched this far into it. Or maybe you grew up in a church, but you never really believed or you never really felt like you belong there and you don't really know who Jesus is. It's time. You heard all the stuff I talked about in this video. All the ducks are lining up. We are waiting right now for the rapture of the church. There is no time to put off a decision whether you're going to go in the rapture or be left behind. And what's that decision based on? Whether you know what Jesus did for you or you reject what Jesus did for you. Because it's pretty simple. Jesus left a throne in heaven to put on human flesh and come to this world. And he walked perfectly. He fulfilled the law perfectly because Jesus was 100% God and 100% man walking the earth in one body, fully God, fully man. He was perfect. He fulfilled the law perfectly. He did it knowing, knowing he was going to get slaughtered. He knew that he came here to shed blood and it's blood that is so precious. A lot of people don't want to hear about blood because it's graphic. But you know what? It's your only ticket to heaven. Is faith in that blood that Jesus shed and belief in what Jesus did for you. We are saved by grace, which is an unearned gift, through faith in Christ Jesus. Through belief in what he did for us. And when you have faith in that blood, when you say to Jesus, Lord, I'm a sinner I know I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness for these sins. And you came to the earth. You came to this world to shed blood that would wash me white as snow, remove all my sins from me. I believe in your blood. I believe it will wash me white as snow. I believe that you went to the cross. You died. Your last words were, it is finished. Because that sin debt we all owe had been paid for in full. And I believe when you died, they put you in a tomb and you rose again. You resurrected on the third day and you're coming back. I need a savior. Please, Jesus, you are the only savior of the world. Forgive my sins. I believe in you. When you do that, you're born again. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. He'll seal you to the day of redemption. He'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. You will be rapture ready. You won't have to worry about the seven years that are coming at us like a speeding bullet. The worst years since mankind was created. You don't want to be here for those seven years. If you think the world is revving up right now with wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes, pestilences and play, if you think it's bad now, wait till the rapture happens. You want to come with us. You want to belong to Jesus and come with us in the rapture. You do not want to be left behind. But if you reject this message of understanding Jesus paid for your sins with his blood, if you say, I don't need that, you will be left behind. You probably won't survive the seven years. A quarter of the population dies the first three and a half years. Between famine and war and violence... It's awful seven years, but you probably won't survive it. But on judgment day, you'll be face to face with the one who shed his blood to save you that you rejected. And you're going to know you're going to be face to face with Jesus going, oh man, I messed up. I rejected it. And you'll spend eternity separated from God. And some will say, well, I don't want to believe in a God that would send me to hell. He didn't. I'm, you've heard this message. You can't plead ignorance. I'm telling you. He shed his blood to pay for your sins. If you reject it, 
you will be eternally separated from God in hell because you rejected the message. I don't want anyone to go to hell. I can think of my worst enemy on earth. And I wouldn't want that person to spend eternity separated from God in hell. I can't, my heart doesn't, it's not wired that way. I hope every person who hears this that doesn't know the Lord says, I want that. That's what I got for you today. All right. I am going to shut the camera off and I am going to say a prayer for every single person who watches this video. And if we're not raptured today, and today is a perfectly good day for the rapture, but if we're not, God willing, I will be back tomorrow for the prayer video. I love you guys.